What's going on guys? I appreciate you tuning in to today's episode. Collecticon Penrith is back for 2024. It's like the first event here in four months. So I'm more than ready and I'm hoping the sellers are stocked up and ready to go as well. Let's rip into it. Let's see what we can find. Now before we get into what I'm picking up and what I'm on the hunt for today, I just gotta make the point right off the bat that it feels so good to be back in a Toy Fair environment for 2024. The last time we were here at Penrith was November of last year and that to me is just far too long ago. So it feels so good to be wandering up and down these aisles and getting back in amongst it for 2024. Now, it probably doesn't even need to be said at this point in time. If you've seen my previous Collecticon videos, you'll know that early bird entry is non-negotiable. We're usually parked in line at least 30 or 40 minutes before the early bird doors open, just having a chat and getting ready to go. Uh, but today, we weren't even waiting to get through the doors for the deals to start, because as we're waiting in line, Tony B from Uncle T's Toys pops out, and Tony had with him this, a, a carded Matchbox Ring Raider set. I, I have a couple of them, but not all of them, so... Well, they're ring kind. And they get the rings. Good. Yeah, the cards seem better days, but sometimes it's good when you have a card like that, because I don't feel bad opening it up. Otherwise, no, I'd otherwise I'd feel too bad ripping it open. you got a point still. Come on, get in there and give me some love. <laughs> and you got the mini comic in there as well. And I, I definitely don't have that mini comic. So that's sick. This is Commander Cub Jones, Hero Wing, sealed on card, but the card, as you can see, is incredibly rough. It's got corners missing, it's been drawn on the bubbles quite yellow, but it's still a sealed on card set of ring raiders, something that's right up my alley. And on account of the condition of the card, Tony was happy to let this go for $10. I mean, you don't have to ask me twice. I can't really even find a set of four loose ring raiders for $10 these days. So I was really happy to scoop this up and get the buying started early. And here we have it here, guys. Like I said, Commander Cub Jones Hero Wing. I do have three of the four planes, but I don't have this, and I don't have the mini comic. So, you know, I have a lot of trouble opening up carded figures from the 80s and the early 90s, but look at the condition of that card. I, I think even I can get my head around opening this up, and we'll have a nice card fresh squadron in the collection. So yeah, big shout out to Tony B. Happy to get the proceedings underway early today. Now sticking with Tony B, as the early bird entry enters straight into Hall 3, where Tony's located, our first stop of the day was Uncle T's Toys. And Tony had a great selection, he had a stack of vintage corpse figures on card, a toy line that I don't often see carded, so they were really cool to have a look at. He also had a great selection of loose street sharks, he had some carded Robocop figures, but what stood out to me most on Tony's table first up was some graded WWF Hasbro figures. The WWF Hasbro's being one of my, if not my favorite toy line, one of the most memorable toy lines of my childhood. He had some really cool figures, a Papa Shango, a Skinner, and a Marty Jannetty. Now I'm on the hunt for a Papa Shango and a Marty Jannetty loose. I would have happily settled for loose, but it was still very cool to see them pristine, graded in nice acrylic cases up close.
chat with Tony, I decided to make a beeline to Hall 1 to try and get ahead of the crowd. And after a quick dash through Hall 1, my first proper stop there was a familiar seller, a guy named Scott from Toyacious. And as always, Scott had a great selection of loose figures from lines like TMNT, Beetlejuice, Police Academy, Dick Tracy. I actually noticed quite a few Dick Tracy figures and I'm getting close to completing that line as far as figures, but there's a bunch of accessories that I need. And I spotted a complete Dick Tracy flat top figure with all three accessories. Actually, these guys have weapons. Oh, he's complete. Yeah, some do. And I've got that. Oh, you got a card of one. Wow, half a card of half one. Half a card of one. <laughs> and I had to scoop it up. I've got the figure in my collection already, but he's missing all of his accessories. So stoked to be able to complete flat top. He's got his ammunition belt, his Tommy gun, and this very sinister rope accessory. And I bundled up flat top with a loose Kenner Police Academy figure, an iconic one at that. We've got Mahoney with his twirling pistol. Missing a couple of other accessories. Mahoney also came with the nightstick and I believe a dog. So I'll have to keep on the lookout for those, but really happy to kick the day off with a couple of loose vintage figures with accessories. of a wander through Hall 1, my buddy Dean, who was an aisle or two ahead of me, called me over because he'd stumbled across a $2 rubbish tub that had some absolute gems in it. First up, there were a couple of WWF Hasbro figures, and I'm not talking about the Wave 1 WWF Hasbro figures that you see all the time. These are sort of 7th or 8th wave figures that you don't often see. And first up, we've got the second version of Mr. Perfect, the blue version of Mr. Perfect, a great looking figure. And the other one is the second version of Hacksaw Jim Duggan. This figure originally came with a US flag accessory, so unfortunately it's missing that. But for $2, pretty much any Hasbro WWF figure in 2024 is coming home with me for $2. So I was stoked that Dino spotted these. And yeah, I just couldn't say no. I've already got both of these figures in my collection. I can check if they're potentially upgrades or not. But like I said, in 2024, if I find WWF Hasbro figures for two bucks, they're coming home with me. And if that's not enough vintage WWF $2 goodness, there was also this guy right here. This is an earlier WWF figure from LJ, and This is one of the LJ and thumb wrestlers from 1985 with obviously the iconic, the legend Hulk Hogan. Now, again, I've already got this thumb wrestler in my collection. I don't collect the LJ but I do like the thumb wrestlers and I've got Hogan, I've got Nikolai Volkov so in an ideal world this would have been JYD or Roddy Piper but still like I said for two bucks pretty much anything 80s or early 90s WWF for two bucks is coming home with me so yeah big shout out to Dino for drawing my attention to that awesome two dollar rubbish tub and it wasn't just the wrestling goodness in the two dollar tub Dino also uncovered these these are a complete set of TMNT promotional toys from mobile service stations released here in Australia in 1990. Here we have an Australian exclusive. So if you're an Aussie kid that grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, and you're a Turtles fan, you'll remember these, and I certainly do. I, I remember when these were coming out in mobile service stations in 1990, you know, I'd be jumping in the car with dad to go put fuel in the car in the hope that I could maybe wrangle one of these. Most collectors here in Australia who are into TMNT already have these in their collections because they're not super rare but I've been resisting the urge to pick these up on eBay, hoping that I would find them out in the wild. And, and Dino basically helped me out with that big time and shouted these for me. So yeah, big shout out to Dino for the set of four mobile TMNT cars. One of my favorite finds of, of the day.
circled back to Hall 3 to have a closer look at Uncle T's toys and at this point I noticed a set of four carded reptiles weapons bootleg role-playing toys. Some that made sense, like some nunchucks and throwing stars, some that didn't, like a butterfly knife, but always cool to see the dodgy bootlegs, and these were on pristine unpunched cards, so they were really cool to see. But that wasn't the only turtle goodness Tony had. I also noticed that he had a tub of loose vintage TMNT figures, one that I needed with the movie stars Splinter. I'm really on the hunt to complete the Movie Stars series at the moment. The ones that I don't have are Raf and Mikey, so they're top of the wish list, but I was still stoked to grab the Movie Stars Splinter. He is complete, so he's got his main weapons being his bow and arrow, his cane, his belt, and his quill on the back there, but he's also got the can of ooze and the Ninja Star. So stoked to have Movie Star Splinter complete in the collection at a great price. Always awesome to add to the vintage TMNT collection. <music> Speaking of TMNT, Cole from Second Childhood Toys was there with a massive setup, just like always, and Cole had a ton of really cool modern stuff, including Super 7 Ultimates TMNT figures, but he also had a complete set of graded 88 10-back TMNT figures, all with really high grades. Now, by the time we got around to Cole's booth, they were already sold, they'd been scooped up, but it was still super cool to see a complete original run of 1988 TMNT figures, pristine and graded beautifully. <laughs> Just like always, our friends from Minikins Collectibles were there with a fantastic selection. Most notable to me were a complete set of 1970s Mego Mad Monsters reissues. I believe they were reissued in the early 2000s, but in a way that are very true to the original, and they were really cool to see up close. They also had some really cool Monsters figures, and also something that stood out to me was something that I've never seen before, and that's some Matchbox Skybusters, which essentially look like larger scale Ring Raiders, which were also released by Matchbox. They were really cool to see. you can't stop by Minikins Collectibles without a rummage through their tubs of Lucy's. There's always some absolute gems to be found there. Last Collecticon, I picked up an LJN ET figure from Minikins Collectibles. Today, I kept the ET theme going with this awesome little, I'm assuming knockoff, but I'm not quite sure. It's one of those grabber toys, and it's 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 got fur all over it. I've got no idea why ET is completely covered in fur, but he is just awesome and I, I couldn't leave him behind. He's going to display great next to my LJN ET figure. And the boys at Minikins also surprised us with a gift. I've got a complete set of four Lego style TMNT minifigures, which I'm excited to put together. And also a vintage TMNT badge. And I've got Raf. I don't know if the boys know that Raf's my guy. Maybe they've been watching my videos, but yeah, I've got to give a massive shout out to the boys at Minikins Collectibles for the gift. You guys are very much appreciated.
as always, there were a bunch of items that I was looking at, that I was thinking about, but I didn't pull the trigger on today. A store there named Taylor Toys and Treasures that always has a fantastic selection of vintage Star Wars and Masters of the Universe, they had a complete Sectors figure there. Zack with his little companion bug Bitor, I believe, complete with all the accessories. I don't see complete Sectors very often, but I'm trying not to start new toy lines at the moment. I've got a couple of incomplete sectors in my collection that I bought many years ago, but if I had have bought that complete Zack today, I would consider that starting a new collection, something I'm trying not to do. I'm trying to be focused in my collecting and stick to the lines that I'm currently already in the process of picking off. So I didn't pick up the complete sector, but one thing that I couldn't leave behind at Taylor Toys and Treasures was this. This is a Mad Balls knockoff. I believe from the 80s, from what I've been able to spot on Google Lens, I'm, I, I think this is an 80s, but it's, it's absolutely a knockoff or bootleg of some kind. It looks a little bit like the Slobulus character from Mad Balls, and it's actually like a spitball water squirting toy. So again, I'm not sure if it's Lanard or if it's released by someone else. If anyone happens to recognize this and know who released this and when, definitely let me know. But this is just one of these things where I couldn't leave it behind. If I was editing this video later on, saw it on the table without picking it up, I, I would be dirty at myself. So I had to grab the knockoff Mad Ball. Now another thing I gave strong thought to today but didn't pick up were a set of four Kenner Real Ghostbusters slimed heroes figures. Now if you follow the channel closely or if you caught my last New Year Top 5 stream with Matt from Keep On Collecting where we spoke about our favourite things that we picked up in 2023 and what we're most on the hunt for in 2024, I spoke at length about the Kenner Real Ghostbusters slimed heroes. They're one of the later waves in that figure line before they get super rare and expensive with the Ecto Glows. And the slimed heroes just look wicked. Awesome colors, fun accessories. We've been slimed. Let's clean up, Lewis. Now we're fighting clean. I very rarely see them. So when I first saw them on the table, we had an Egon with his Proton Pack and Stream, and then we had Venkman, Stance, and Zedemore without accessories. When I first saw them, I kind of was about to grab them and, and get a deal done on them. I really want to get this slimed Heroes Egon, but man, he's seen better days, and unfortunately his Proton Stream is a bit chewed up at the end, but I don't know, I'm thinking I might regret not picking this up, but there's a couple of other slimed Heroes here as well, but you know, unfortunately, Venkman's seen better days and likewise with Stan, so I'm a bit of a think about these. But I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna hold out for better condition versions of those figures. But again, I've been on the hunt for the Slimed Heroes now pretty much since the start of last year. That's how infrequently you tend to see them here in Australia. So I may regret not picking them up, but it just, I couldn't on account of the condition. So the hunt continues for the Slimed Heroes Ghostbusters. Speaking of Ghostbusters, it was also super cool to see a boxed Extreme Ghostbusters Ecto-1. Now the Extreme Ghostbusters toy line came later on to support the Extreme Ghostbusters animated series. And I'm not super nostalgic about it. I don't remember the Extreme Ghostbusters series or, or the toy line for that matter. But one thing that does appeal to me about the Extreme Ghostbusters line is that they released figures that were based on some of the iconic villains from the original Real Ghostbusters animated series, Sam Hain, for example, a figure that I'm definitely keen to add to my collection at some point in time because 
one of the faults of Kenner's real Ghostbusters line is that we didn't get a lot of figures based on the iconic villains in the line. But with all that said, it was very cool to see an Extreme Ghostbusters Ecto-1 because I very rarely see Extreme Ghostbusters these days, but I, I just decided it's not something that I desperately need for my collection. Once again, I'm trying to stay focused, but I still really appreciate the seller letting me have a good look. Awesome day getting back out on the hunt with the usual legends, catching up with familiar faces, seeing friends I'd not seen since last year, and one guy that I bumped into today who I was stoked to catch was Shane from the YouTube channel Shaneco HD. I've mentioned him on this channel before. I definitely recommend you check out his channel. There'll be a link in the description below. Shaneco HD, big time collector of Simpsons, Fortnite, a lot of cool trading card content on his channel as well. So definitely check it out. But above all, he's just a champion bloke. And he surprised me with a very generous gift, a vintage TMNT puzzle. I remember these jigsaw puzzles from 1990 or 1991. I had a couple of these as a kid. These were released by Krona, and they all came with a poster. And this one still has the poster. Check this out. This is this is too cool. I might have to actually maybe pop this into a frame. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, massive shout out to Shane for that one. And I've also got to give a big shout out to my mates Dan and Monique who surprised me with an early birthday gift. My birthday's coming up next month. If I'm perfectly honest with you guys, I'm just trying to ignore it and, until it goes away, but those guys, I've got good friends, so they won't let me do that. And they surprised me with a video game emulator. Now, I'm very antiquated when it comes to my video gameplay. I've got the Super Nintendo hooked up, um, but these guys have gone and hooked it up with a game stick controller set that has like tens of thousands of games on it. So I'm pretty pumped to, to rip into this. I'm looking forward to playing a lot of classic games from Sega Master System, Genesis, NES, Super Nintendo, games that I don't have. So yeah, got to give a massive, massive shout out and appreciation to Dan and Monique. Thank you very much, guys. So there you have it. The first Collecticon of 2024 is in the books and what a fantastic day it was. So much fun getting amongst it. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you're into this stuff that I'm into and you're located anywhere in New South Wales or even down in Canberra, I definitely recommend you hit the road and check out Collecticon. It is so much fun. There is such a huge variety of stuff up for grabs. Obviously my videos focus on the vintage stuff that I'm specifically into, but there is absolutely no shortage of modern toys and collectibles. You've got video games from all generations, a lot of comics, a lot of trading cards, you've got Lego, and you've even got action figure displays and acrylic cases. So there's just so much to see, so much to grab, and above all, it's just a fun day getting out there and mixing it with fellow collectors and, and just great sellers. I can't speak highly enough about Collecticon, and of course, got to give a big shout out to Amy and her team for putting on such a great event. But guys, that will do us for today. I'm knackered. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, you're a dead set champion. I hope to hear from you in the comments. As always, you're more than welcome to hit us up on Instagram at Crusher Collects. I'll see you back soon for the next one. And until then, cheers. <laughs>